talk about resilience. What is resilience? How do we understand resilience? Kadalasan ang imahe ng resilience sa atin ay ang kawayan na pagkatapos ipan ng malakas na hangin ay babalik sa kanya ang pagkatinding. The ability to bounce back. Lately, resilience is getting a lot of flack from social media, accusing government of relying on the resilience of people to survive disasters on their own and cope with its impact, instead of providing resources to protect the rights of the vulnerable. Would providing more relief goods really build resilience of the community? Again, how do we understand resilience? If resilience is bouncing back, why do survivors want to bounce back to their original state of poverty it will again make them vulnerable to the next disaster? Is resilience even compatible with people-centered development? Let's look at our context. We often describe our current reality as complex, wherein complexity is brought about by the diversity of context and community. And then we add that this diversity is constantly changing. It becomes difficult to analyze complexity, much more conduct planning toward sustainability. This complexity is recognized in various fields. It isn't just about natural hazards or conflict. Change is a part of life. The new normal is not that we have to do physical distancing or wear masks. The new normal is that changing complexity is accelerating. It's difficult to forecast the future. Why? Because people are reflexive. People react to forecast. When we see a negative trend, we look at means to avert the forecasted disaster. People communicate with others and learn by doing. So they change the given parameters in the forecast itself. Instead, it's used foresight, a combination of analysis of trends and insights from the learnings and dialogues we conduct with other people, not forecast. Systems are changing faster than our ability to recalibrate forecasting models. Learning is the key to adapting to a new and changing world. Before the eruption of Taal Volcano, most of the population have not even internalized how living near an active crater was like. Before the pandemic, most people didn't even understand how virus is transmitted or what a lockdown is. It may be impossible to understand all the risks, but it is possible to assess and prioritize risks and learn from experiences. As they often say, it would be a shame to waste a disaster if we do not learn from it. However, systems might not, might not be so unpredictable from a larger and longer perspective. Resilience is measured in decades, not six months or three-year projects. Patterns emerge with hindsight. Often we approach reality with an ordered linear plan. We have studied in CD132, in developing our logical framework and theory of change, we analyze the context, we define the desired change, and then we implement a strategy that is supposed to change the context. However, reality is not as linear. The context, strategy, and the goals all experience dynamic complexity. The links between cause and effects are not clear. Reality is not linear and stable. Moreover, linearity and stability are not the goals. Instead, we have different strategies and different results. Instead of streamlining and searching for robust models and fail-safe plans, maybe we should start reinventing the wheel. Maybe we should start looking at alternative solutions to the same problem. We may need to have a plan B or plan C when the great plan A fails. Instead of streamlining, we start thinking of redundancy and buffers. We think of savings, food stockpile, a reserve pool of second liners that are equally competent to do the job of leaders. The discipline of project development is slowly eroding our resilience with the primacy of logical frameworks as tools to access funding from donors. Much can be learned from the strategies in community organizing. Di ba sa tactic section, magro-role-playing tayo kasama ang mga leader? Kung ganitong sabihin ni Mayor, anong sasabihin mo? Kung kumontra siya, 
Anong sagot mo? Kung sumang-ayon siya, anong gagawin mo? Scenario building, a skill that we should continue to develop amidst a ready, a modern, and efficient world. So what is resilience? Actually, there is no consensus. Different disciplines have different definitions. I borrow my definition from the field of ecological resilience. Resilience is the ability to absorb disturbance or shocks without shifting to an alternate regime. How far can the bamboo bend before it breaks? We recognize that systems have resistance such that it can absorb stresses. In capacity building, we try to avert disasters with various programs, projects, and collective action. But what if the bamboo breaks? What do we do? Do we even prepare for such a worst case scenario? We conduct advocacy and campaigns to prevent the building of Kaliwa Dam, to prevent the large-scale mining operations that will pollute the downstream communities, or to address the eviction and demolition threats to informal set settlements. But what do we do if our advocacy fails? Do we simply leave a community and look for another community where we can build up their power to prevent another development aggression through advocacy? Why look at resilience? Simply because we have to factor in change. Again, the challenge for community organizers. Kung sanay tayo sa pagpapakilos ng mga tao sa pamagitan ng pagpapalaki ng mga nararanasang problema para maging issue ito sa kanila, paano tayo magpapakilos ng mga tao kung di pa nila nararanasan ang risko o ang kalamidad? Here is another definition that I actively use. Resilience is the power of individuals and communities to live with dignity, responding successfully to the disasters and risks they face, but taking full advantage of the opportunities they have. There is an emphasis on empowerment. It affirms the dignity and worthiness of people. It looks not just on surviving and coping, but in thriving with the different opportunities brought about by change. It incorporates risks-based with needs-based and rights-based approaches. As such, it is redefining resilience as the evolution of development and humanitarian work using a political definition rather than a technical one. Resilience involves integration at different scales. At the local scale, there is a need to develop dialogue and linkages within and amongst local communities and stakeholders and disciplines. In many cases, DRR has been a unifying force in local communities, as solidarity is reinforced through bridging and bonding networks. From local to global, we see how different levels interact with each other. Kaya malakas ang bibing ka approach natin. May pagpapalakas ng hanay sa baba, may himas batok sa taas. Pero pang, bar pero pang barbecue model kung saan tuhog-tuhog ang pagkilos mula sa individual, papunta sa komunidad, papunta sa bayan, hanggang sa nasyonal. Working at different levels enhances resilience building. And from a temporal perspective, we integrate the past learnings with current issues and future risks. There have been numerous studies on building social resilience. To synthesize it, it involves enhancing people's ability to anticipate change, to buffer disturbances, to learn, to self-organize, and to adapt to the change. However, planning or programming how to develop these abilities may surprisingly be counterintuitive in some cases. We will find out more on this on the next lecture on programming. So before we proceed, are there any questions?